Hello, LinkedIn, uh, for another LinkedIn Live today. Um, we have two great guests that will be answering questions regarding the keynote speeches they delivered during the vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine summit last Thursday. Um, I will briefly introduce them to you and then, um, and then we'll jump into the, into the Q&A. So on one side, um, a very, uh, a very um, how to say, um, very current reality. So we have Anas Hijabi. Uh, he is very flexible and kind to join us it's actually from a hospital and, and in a public space, so he has to wear a mask. Anas, thanks for the flexibility. He is the chief commercial officer of Aramex. Uh, he's been with the company for quite a while. He has more than 15 years of experience uh, across the logistics sector in many different roles. Um, and he's responsible for Aramex's ambitious growth strategy globally. As many of you know, most of you know, Aramex is a multinational logistics career and package delivery company with 18,000 employees in more than 70 countries, as well as the first Arab-based company to be listed on the Nasdaq, Nasdaq Stock Exchange. So, Anas, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Radu. Nice to be here. And then we have Jonathan Savoir, who is the Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of Quincus. Um, he started the company in 2014 with the goal to disrupt global supply chains through digitalization. As a pioneering supply chain technology company, Quincus works with high-profile logistics providers, including one of Asia's biggest airlines, a leading international in the Indonesian taxi firm, as well as the many top global logistics companies. Jonathan Kick started his career as a data scientist and as well as an entrepreneur in residence at INSEAD. Jonathan, great to have you as well, and thanks for joining. Thanks for having me, Madam. Super. So as always, before we begin, everybody feel free to comment your questions. If you're on the platform, comment on the platform. If you're on the LinkedIn Live, comment on LinkedIn, and we will take as many as we can. So do feel free to do that. Um, guys, maybe let's start first and foremost a little bit with uh, a question that we received and, and maybe some examples or one example for both of you, right, where you have specifically worked in your capacity at RMX, Quincus, around delivering uh, COVID-19 vaccine in a market or geography and tell us a little bit pluses, minuses, challenges, lessons learned, things to come ahead. So Anas, maybe I start with you first and foremost and then I'll move to Jonathan. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, this is a question that we get all the time when it comes to uh, the, uh, what's the what are the biggest challenges that we face uh, to deliver basically uh, the vaccines and and uh, and it's very important to think of the vaccine life cycle in terms of basically milestones. Uh, what happens from an origin, from a manufacturing facility, the challenges that we face basically at origin side, the challenges that we face for transporting them, uh, international line haul on aircrafts, and then finally you have the challenge of mid middle mine and last mine as well. Each one of these represent a challenge. Uh, obviously, there are challenges at the uh, uh, broader scope of moving end to end, such as ensuring that you have visibility on um, on on basically the uh, the temperature, uh, uh, the life cycle end to end. But at the same time, logistically and physically, each one of these milestones represent a challenge. For example, today, as uh, everyone is aware, there is a crunch in capacity when it comes to airline. Uh, uh, belly space availability, specifically belly space. So there is there is going to be heavy. Uh, focus on freighters to fulfill the gap uh, that we have in Billy Space passenger uh, aircraft. That's a big challenge. So, uh, so it is expected that we might need. I mean, if, if uh, yesterday I was looking at the latest updates, so there is in terms of uh, capacity, there is still uh, 35 to 25 percent uh, capacity crunch uh, between between uh, in, in most regions, basically. Uh, so, making sure that this capacity is there as we roll out the vaccine is very important. At the same time, the last mile delivery, for instance, today, the vaccine deliveries require two to three times what uh, what uh, what basically UNICEF has been doing uh, last year in terms of basically ability to deliver the, the, the quantity that we're talking about. So there is there is a capacity problem primarily, and there is also the availability of the equipment and so on. And something that people forget sometimes is the the volume that is required not to move the vaccine itself, but the syringes and all the PPE that comes with it as well. So that is also something important to think about. 
uh, all in all, it's basically uh, about uh, control, about capacity, and making sure that you have global team that can mobilize very, very quickly. So these are the, high, the headlines when it comes to the challenges that we face for, for delivering the vaccine. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I think a lot of what we have seen as well is, is in terms of the visibility, being able to integrate the different parts of the models, um, right? And, and that's really something that we're working on, for instance, is, uh, and, and seconding what Anna said, uh, being able to integrate, you know, your first mile into your mid miles, being able to integrate your air freights, being able to provide that visibility in one integrated manner. We're seeing a lot of troubles there, um, mainly because some providers will have the flexibility and technology systems that support it. Some of them won't be. Some of them will have the temperature sensors, depending on you know whether whether you're tracking the containers or whether you're tracking the packages themselves and the vaccines themselves. Um, so, so I think those are also some of the challenges that we're, we're certainly seeing in the market uh, to delivering the vaccine safely and, and at a decent speed. I'll, I'll open up this particular uh, challenge that, that came about in one or two of the panels that, that I moderated during the summit, and there were also quite, quite a few questions. There's a, there's a good friend of mine that works for the Asian Development Bank, and he's quite an expert in, in cold chain. And he, his point was, um, and the question that came up was, at the point of arrivals of the vaccines, right, when, you know, sometimes because of also the urgent permits that the vaccines get, or the urgent approvals, they are approved in certain markets, but they may not be approved at the, at the market where they, where they arrive. And then you have to do, the customs have to do the inspection, and sometimes you open up that you know, that, that package, you take maybe one vial or two vials, but then, you know, there's obviously a tempering of the whole temperature of the, of the, um, of the uh, package, right? So I guess how can, how can that part be mitigated, right? So that you don't end up uh, falling without, you know, uh, outside of the, the uh, needed temperature. And, and what are some of the solutions or the ways in which you, both of you from your different angles um, can help? Jonathan, maybe let's start with you. Right. I, I think, you know, one of the things that we're seeing more and more is to not just track the container, for instance, but also track the individual um, boxes themselves, right? So if you open up a, a ULD that you don't just, you know, uh, uh, start decreasing temperatures and, and start tampering with the entire container rather than just single um, single boxes, and some of the manufacturers are also putting temperature sensors on the boxes themselves rather than on the actual uh, reefer or on the container themselves. Um, and I think so. one of the things that you can mitigate is by having a full histogram on the individual components rather than on the whole um, and being able to measure this on, on a holistic histogram uh, would, would, uh, are some of the solutions that are out there to, to solve that. So I, I think that's one of the key, key um, key solutions to, to work through. Yeah, and I, on, on our side, basically, I definitely second what Jonathan said. I think tracking at the box level is, uh, is, is, is the way to go. And this is something that we have basically decided on uh, early. Uh, if you want to have a uh, distribution uh, structure that has the integrity to monitor basically the uh, uh, the integrity of every single dose is, is extremely important. Um, obviously, on the broader level, it's very important that public and private sectors collaborate on, on finding solutions to, the, um, uh, to these agreements in the first place uh, and making sure that there is uh, better collaboration with governments early on. These vaccines will have to be treated differently when it comes to pre-clearance. There needs to be proper uh, middle mile infrastructure for storage. Uh, so there needs to be distribution hubs, uh, 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 basically countries uh, at different levels now are talking to each other to make sure that you mitigate the root cause of that problem by making sure that these vaccines get priority. But at the same time, obviously, to Jonathan's point, it's very important that, I mean, things happen, right? So you want to make sure that you are in control when these things happen and that you are able to track and report at the uh, uh, smallest SKU level or smallest piece or smallest basically box level where where uh, where the batch is going to be delivered. Uh, uh, but this introduced other challenges when it comes to, OK, how do you want now to make sure that every box is is labeled and uh, every box has the has the device? And this increases the cost and complexity of, of managing operationally. Uh, uh, and this is where uh, uh, I mean, providers will have to think of 
how we can especially basically uh, players like uh, uh, like where Jonathan is uh, a solutions provider we'll have to think how we can make it more reasonably uh, cost effective uh, and how can we integrate these technology solutions in a way that can combine not only the device tra of, of, that tracks the temperature but also how can we make these devices more usable uh, how can we make them uh, easier basically to integrate to, uh, to, to, to plug in to activate and so on all of these things are very important to think about Jonathan, you want to build upon that? I know that you guys have a couple of, so it's a, Anna just gave yeah. you. <laughs> sure. No, I, I think uh, to Anna's point, it, it is critical that we see a integrated solution, right? Because if you have to look at one dashboard for temperatures and then another dashboard for milestones and another dashboard for tracking the vehicles and then another dashboard for tracking the packages, that that just becomes a nightmare for any operational staff on the ground. And, and it, it just becomes something that they also it becomes untenable and, and that's how we then end up with missed dosages or, or dosages that, that just have not been tracked well and uh, where temperatures may go up for some of them, right? And, and it will and, and accidents are bound to happen and that's okay as long as there is a mitigation measure. Um, so I think the, the, the solutions that we need to look at as, you know, as, as not just in the private sector, but uh, to Anna's point, also in the public sector and combine that is really looking at these integrated solutions, working with both the private sector, both with manufacturers, so, so the pharmas themselves, um, as well as the, the uh, providers and, and being able to provide that in one integrated platform. Um, that's the hard part, right? That's, that's getting everyone, everything to communicate. That's really is the hard part. And where there is no real one-stop solution for that. I think you need, we need to uh, work all together to be able to provide that. Mm. And I, I, I want to plug in a little bit further, Jonathan, I'll double click. I know that you guys also have, uh, and there was this question specifically for you guys, live location monitoring for remote areas. And, and you do have, I think it's called the geo engine, right? I mean, I think you, you have a certain tool that, that, that you say improves the, uh, by 30% the reliability of addresses than standard geocoders. Maybe tell us or talk us through about uh, a little bit about that as well. Sure. Um, so one of the systems that we have, uh, like you rightfully said, is, is the GeoEngine. And this is a natural language process-powered system. Uh, what it does, it recognizes addresses and it recognizes regions in, in an automated fashion in which that it understands the language that you and I write in um, or an end consumer or, or any business. Um, and then it actually figures out where these locations are. Simultaneously, it's also a mapping solution on which we map um, all of our deliveries. And, and this allows us to be able to uh, figure out these locations better and more accurately. Um, this is especially applicable to, to e-commerce, but you know, it, it is certainly also applicable when we're talking about vaccine distributions in, in Indonesia, for instance, um, you know, in, in a widely complex market, or you know, for instance, in, in the Middle East as well, where addressing is, is a difficult task uh, for, for any provider, right? technology or logistics provider. Um. I, I, I kind of also want to, to build upon that. So uh, if, if I'm to come a little bit to Anas, because um, Aramex, you're, you're a market leader in, in many markets around last mile, around, um, around that, that, that element. I guess, obviously, you have a fairly strong presence in Africa. Africa is, is going to be quite a, quite a challenge. So uh, I wanted to open up a little bit the Pandora's box and, and say, see a little bit, you know, how do you also think about managing this emerging markets, let's call them, or more difficult markets. Do you also think of partnerships, of, 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 of finding some local partners that you can speed up this distribution? How, how are you planning that? Absolutely. This, this, see, this challenge, uh, Radu, is a challenge of uh, collaboration more than anything else, if you ask me. So it's about uh, uh, different parties coming together be it logistics players, this is one obvious one. Uh, we have to come together and we have to enable the local players, uh, every possible one that at least, at least basically meets the minimum requirements that would allow them to, uh, to operate. We have to fund them, we have to provide them with support, technology, uh, and we have to enable basically as many providers as possible uh, locally. Obviously, we have our infrastructure in many places, but it's, uh, it's, it's a question of how much can you scale in order to be able to, to meet the challenge, uh, especially in the rural areas, 
difficult places and maybe through the discussion that we had we know uh, how many many places are even not reachable today uh, and you want to ensure the integrity of the deliveries as well that's one at the same time there needs to be collaboration also at other dimensions between manufacturers and uh, logistics player uh, providers and then uh, with technology players like uh, like uh, the likes of what Jonathan does and so on on different in different basically uh, streams of the supply chain so it, this challenge is about collaboration it's about coming together it's about enabling smaller and bigger players and I mentioned in my um, my keynote the need for OEMs as well to understand that fact uh, the manufacturers they have to understand that the traditional way of engaging one provider uh, uh, is, is, is basically limited. It's limiting everyone eventually because it's very important to open up and create more opportunities for different players to play in the market. I'll, I'll, I'll pull this question for, for both of you, really. It is, you know, uh, Khalid is asking uh, specifically about RMX, but I think it's, it's a relevant question for both of you. And I think it's a question, I mean, you, you've addressed both of you uh, uh, slightly already, and, and, and you've sp spoken about it in the presentations as well, but I think it's a, it's a concern for many people, right? So let's, let's go a little bit deeper, uh, maybe, um, into the specifics of how, you know, how will we ensure this I guess integrity, right, of the vaccines for the for the last mile. Um, maybe Jonathan, I'll, I'll pass to you, and then I'll come back to to Anas because I think both of you are in the same. Whilst the question is for Aramex, I think you know it's 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 for both of you. Um, I, I think you know there's a couple of ways of doing it, and, and we've touched upon some of some of the things. One of them is making sure that uh, monitoring of the temperatures, monitoring of of the actual goods, is is done in a proper way. And it's rightfully pointed out that a lot of providers don't do it, right? And, and I think uh, it, it's not as a, a lack of willingness, it's just a lack of capability that we are all building out as an industry, right? And we need to, we need to work together to build it out. That's, that's the first and, and primary one. Um, I would actually expand on that. I, I would ar almost argue that it's not just in the last mile delivery uh, and the supply chain component, but I would almost say it's also in the last meter. And I, I touched upon this briefly um, also in, in the keynote where even once it's been delivered to the distribution center or the hospital or the pharmacy, wherever um, you know, people are actually getting vaccinated, even there it is critical that we continue measuring and, and monitoring temperatures. And, and we've received these requests as well of, hey, you know, don't just switch it off the moment that it's been delivered, but actually continue the monitoring um, until the box is opened up and until the vaccines are distributed. Um, because you know, there's there's lack of information the moment that, for instance, delivery get uh, gets done, and then you don't actually know what happens in these distribution centers. So it's just making sure that integrity is there. Um, I, I think that's really important, and making sure that the providers have the right tool sets, the right alerts, uh, that the operators themselves, you know, the dispatchers or um, the operation managers have the right alerts uh, going on when something does when temperatures go above their their minimums or maximums. Um, when you know, deliveries are going away, uh, things like that help. And, and I think that's important to be able to ensure that integrity. But I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to Anas to also elaborate on what they're doing. Yeah, sure. There is, there is, uh, there is a very important component here of eventually for you to, do, to make a successful delivery. You have to ensure that you have the infrastructure, first of all. So, the monitoring is absolutely very important to ensure the integrity. It's kind of a quality assurance and uh, a proactive measure for you to know that your delivery has been uh, has been done right and that those vaccines are worthy for uh, for patients. But at the same time, uh, uh, and also to, to 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 have corrective actions in in case things go wrong, as Jonathan pointed out. But I mean, let's face it. Eventually, you need to have the uh, uh, warehouses that are temperature controlled, you need to have the vehicles that are temperature controlled, you need to have the people who are trained and equipped to handle these uh, equipment, you need to have the collaboration with the technology provider to make sure that your uh, uh, your entire basically fleet and uh, warehouses and even uh, during uh, airline uh, uh, connectivity that the temperature is, is, uh, is intact and that you have the infrastructure to, to manage this end to end. So it's mainly, if you ask me, what is the uh, um, uh, the most important part? It is making sure that you have the fleet, the capability, in terms of resources, in terms of 
people in terms of uh, equipment on the ground across the entire value chain. And then obviously you need to couple that with technology that is very strong that will allow you to understand uh, where you have uh, uh, potential challenges, where you have uh, temperature exposure, especially in areas where you know that there is a problem, such as the one that you mentioned, the Radu on the customs. If we know that the customs clearance in this place is is, is, is not easy, it's not really streamlined, it's not a uh, single window and so on. This is where you need to focus specifically to make sure that you have that visibility to ensure that uh, at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the vaccine throughout the journey uh, goes through uh, different, uh, uh, I would say, from with different basically uh, handovers and, uh, and uh, from, a, from an airline to uh, customs, from customs to, uh, to, to, to basically warehouse teams and so on. You want to make sure that all of them are operating as one team and technology brings you that basically visibility. But you also want to make sure that all of these equipment are uh, worthy for, for handling the vaccine. Depending obviously on, as many of you are aware, there are different vaccine requirements. So there are the minus 80, there is the, 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 the I mean, there are different basically uh, temperatures, but in the end, it's all uh, requiring certain uh, capabilities and certain equipment that needs to be there. So having the equipment in the first place is key, right? So not everyone can do this delivery. That is very important to understand first. And then you need to have the right technology and right uh, uh, teams as well who are equipped to handle. Staying on the topic of people, um, which which is uh, crucial, I'm, I'm curious of your views of, um, you know, first, what, what type of uh, skills, attitude, uh, skills can be hard skills, obviously. I mean, uh, we, we have a part of the business that does executive search and we've seen an increase in a spike almost in the number of companies looking for cold chain specialists because ultimately that's that's what is required, right, from a hard skills perspective. But I'm curious from, from where you sit, right, from you guys, what are some of the hard skills and some of the soft skills that are badly needed, right, to get this done in a proper manner? Jonathan, maybe let's start with you. Um, I, I imagine actually the answer to be quite different from for a technology company versus a, a Aramex and an operator. Um, however, the you know the, the way that we're looking for skill sets is very much looking at how do we build out the expertise in cold chain and in logistics and how do we translate that into a technology product, right? That's one of the most critical components. And, and you need um, both the soft skill uh, to be able to understand how a logistics supply chain works and be able to have uh, the right communiques with the right providers and the right partnerships with the right providers um, to be able to also understand their needs because their needs are shifting from time to time. and, and um, I, I think it's important to be able to understand that. That's component number one, um, and, and that's that's a soft skill um, in, in many ways. And then the second is, is a more hard skill about how do we actually design the process and how do we design the product. Um, you know, and, and we can forget about coding it up for a second as, as an engineer, but then uh, really designing the workflows, how users are working through that. Um, a lot of that is. Uh, both a hard and soft skill, actually, uh, combining with the product and product managers, uh, working through UI UX, working through what do the users actually need to see right now versus what do, can they click through. Um, so I, I think those are really the skill sets that we're looking for uh, within both our product managers, engineers, and then also the people who are who are taking in the requirements in, in the commercial team. Um, so it, it's quite a variety of skill sets that, that you need a technology company to be able to run that and be able to understand that. Thank you. Uh, Anas? Oh, I think Anas disappeared for a second. Um, so so, so I think while, while Anas is unmuting, I, I think the, the, the problem is to be able to get those skill sets to work. And I'm assuming Anas is actually facing the same because we, we all do is getting those skill sets to work in a streamlined manner, right? That's that's the that's the critical component uh, because you need both both sides of the coin, soft and hard skills, um, and they don't often match. So that that is certainly we need to work with. No, and, and to your point, I think um, another area of consideration, and I guess that makes the difference, all the difference, a huge chunk of the difference between the solutions from a technology perspective, like yourselves that work versus the ones that don't, is the practicality of it. And is that 
matching, like you rightfully said, of having smart people, right? You know, you come from a data science background, you're a smart guy, and you have a lot of uh, smart people in Quincus. But um, me linking them with the practical, hands-on industry experience, and I, and I know you have some veterans within Quincus, and I've seen that in other companies as well that have managed to launch and scale successful products. So that practicality around it, because sometimes, um, you know, uh, technology is there, but if you lose the reality of what's going on in the port, in the customs, in the, you know, with the container, it, 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 it can miss out the, you know, ultimately the user experience, right? And the, and what does the user actually need? That's right. And it, it happens all too often, unfortunately, right? There's, there's um, a lot of the companies that we see and, you know, on both sides of the coin, um, we, we see this, that people just hire, you know, people for who they are and, and they're great, um, but then they don't have the right uh, expert, you know, the right experience or the right skill sets um, from the industry or knowing the right um, problem statements that, that logistics providers are struggling with um, to, then, to then solve for it. And I, I think that's really building out these right partnerships is also something we continuously need to do and, and are doing. Mm -hmm. Well, we're getting a question from Christoph that I will want to pull it off. I mean, there's the second parts. I think Christoph came a little bit late. So the first part is more about how do you ensure the last mile, which we already discussed. But then he has a second part to the question, which is of cost custody documentation security. I mean, this is an interesting part. I don't know if, you know, if necessarily, I mean, I'm putting you on the spot here, Jonathan, because I don't know the answer myself. I hope you do. <laughs> No problem, but it's it's an interesting point, right? So I, I you know, tell tell me your thoughts. Right, I, I think it comes back down to and and Anas spoke about it as well before. It, we need to all work together towards one solution um, and and be able to integrate each other. Um, I, I think there is an element of uh, so, for instance, we have our open application platform um, in which that we take in. Uh, you know, varied amounts of data from different providers, from different IoT sensors, from different um, documentation uh, databases, and, and really combine this into one platform. Um, so where you can really be able to sign off from one scan to the next, right? So the moment that one um, one provider hands over to another, we, we essentially make sure that documentation as well as the scans are, are correctly filled out and done. Um, and, and it's as simple as that that can ensure, making sure that that custody and, and chain of custody is, is performed. Um, but often, what, what happens all too often, unfortunately, is that you have technology systems that, that mismatch, that don't really integrate well with each other, IT systems that, work, that don't work with each other. And then you end up with a printout by one system and a printout of another, and then you exchange them and sign it, and then you're good to go. Um, so I, I think that's kind of making sure that these technology systems integrate better um, is, is also a key journey we all need to go through. Um, and, and Anas touched upon briefly about also the OEMs playing a, a very important part in this. Um, this is true, right? The, the OEMs and technology companies as well, we're, we're all guilty of it. We still have very closed systems, unfortunately, um, that don't talk to each other. And, and that's something that we're definitely trying to change at Quincus. Uh, by having a full open ecosystem and, and allowing anyone and everything to integrate. But that's that's still a struggling block. So that that would be my answer to Christoph. Mm. Thank you for that. And I, and I guess the science, and I was talking, and one panel was discussing the changes that have occurred in c customs procedures, the fact that, you know, stuff that were archaic and, you know, paper-based have well, more, more or less overnight, right? In the overall scheme of things, it's been years and years and nothing changed. And now, you know, um, it was accelerated and digital went went in. I think uh, Singapore, I'm going to do a little bit of, of uh, marketing for Singapore, but they do do a great job. I think they announced, they're the second country in the world to announce uh, the e-bill of lading. Uh, there's there's all sorts of things that are, are happening at a much, much faster pace, right? In terms of the digital uh, footprint. And then, as you've said, right, this API connectivity and this uh, systems coming together um, are happening as well, which is which is great. And are more and more uh, this kind of platforms that are integrated are there. So uh, I think we can be positive. Uh, you know, if anything, we've all seen that that graph that said who sped up the digital transformation of companies in post COVID nineteen. Um, 
and, and you know, hopefully we stay on the trajectory. But, uh, you know, Anas is back. So, Anas, uh, I'll, I'll bring back the question um, to you on the on the skill side, if you can if you can hear us and, and share your perspective from RMX, hard skills, soft skills that you think are crucial to get this COVID-19 vaccine rollout done well. Sure, sure. And sorry for the uh, for the interruption that happened. The I think this is a very important question, uh, Radu, because uh, before we touch on the hard skills, what I have observed basically, and when we started developing task forces behind, uh, especially this kind of situation, not I mean, COVID nineteen is one one big uh, situation, obviously, but but with situations of the, such as logistics companies that require intervention many times, right, in, in the past. And what is very important to start with is having people who have passion, right, uh, who are really passionate about other people and uh, who, who believe in that cause, uh, basically. That's very important because this is where you get most of the uh, 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 dynamics and, uh, and the, the effort and the energy that is difficult to quantify, right? This is not to not to not to forego the fact that you need to have skills, obviously hard skills. Uh, in this in this area, obviously, you need healthcare uh, uh, specialized people who have certain certifications in some places, depending on what what area are they managing, depending on the uh, uh, milestone that they are managing. So you, so you need people who understand basically technology integration very quickly. You have to integrate these. Uh, systems so quickly, you have to be able to think out of the box. Back to the point that uh, that, that you mentioned or Jonathan mentioned, when it comes to, for example, uh, uh, creating visibility on the box level, uh, 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 when you want when you want uh, them to connect the the box to a tag and then the tag to a shipment, which is uh, an airway bill, for example, in our case, you need to you need to make that easy for uh, sometimes hospital who are not equipped to do that, right? So the technology can do it, but you have people at the hospitals who, who do not know how to do it. So you need to be able to create these softwares very quickly, applications that are easy to use and that you can put in the hands of the customer very quickly. They have to be very intuitive so they can do that job, right? Technology is no problem, but you need to create, you need the users who are able to use that technology. So, um, uh, and then you have the warehouse people who need to be trained on and certified to handle uh, uh, this kind of uh, stuff sometimes in some warehouses you need also uh, pharmacists right to be to be there as well in the, in the place in the on the ground to make sure that uh, the overall integrate so you different different skills but I think if you ask me about one thing that I see uh, a success factor is people who are passionate about the subject and who are um, really uh, managing with purpose uh, they want to connect to a, a higher purpose and this is also management requirement to create uh, leadership basically to create basically the purpose behind what are we doing and, and, and why are we trying to do it and what problem are we trying to solve, right? It's not about moving a shipment from A to B, it's about uh, trying to help humanity. No, and, and probably there's there's never been a more daunting task and more important task for, for logistics and supply chain professionals in most of our lifetimes, I mean, I think I, I would almost argue that all of our lifetimes, um, because it, this is a global pandemic. So I, I mean, uh, it, it's Indeed. depending on all of us to get it get it sorted. Also, it's a great it's a great spotlight opportunity for supply chain in general. I mean, I think, and and what we have observed is you know boards uh, all of a sudden found out what is supply chain in the last couple of months if they didn't know already. Um, there's been a couple of moves where supply chain was elevated at board level in, in manufacturing companies or retail companies. Uh, logistics providers have, have, have come into play. Governments have come together. I mean, the HOPE consortium that, that you are part of, Anas, in Middle East, there's the World Economic Forum that came together. So there's definitely a lot of beacons of hope of people coming together and acting and moving quite fast. Not to say that, you know, also the the speed and velocity with which these vaccines have been developed uh, i mean it's it's quite mind-boggling we had yesterday dksh which is a large distributor of of, of, of uh, vaccines here in in um, in asia and bj who's the global head said that in his in his life he did not believe that a vaccine can be delivered in in a year and he was proven wrong so i think even that i i think speaks uh, a lot to to what happens when we, we come together, collaborate, and put our heads um, uh, to get things done. So um, 
could not agree more with your point on us. It is about purpose and it is about finding that passion. And I think we all have, you know, a lot to, to, to do uh, and, and to contribute. Um, and on, on that note, I mean, we have we have a lot of other questions. I'll, I'll take you offline as well. So we have some on the platform. We have some on, on LinkedIn. I want to thank both of you. Um, Anas, in, in particular, very, you know, um, uh, thanks a lot for the flexibility. And, and we know that, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're outside. So thanks. And, you know, this is a kind of a COVID-19 live situation, right? So thanks for joining. Um, Jonathan as well. And, and you know, keep healthy, guys. And, and keep, um, you know, keep up the great work in delivering these vaccines to the population. You too. Thank you so much, Radu. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Radu, thank you for the audience.